The nursing process is a problem-solving approach to the identification and treatment of client problems and provides a framework for assisting clients and families to their optimum level of functioning. The nursing process is how nurses think, how they identify client problems, determine outcomes, and prioritize nursing care for clients. We have three primary goals in nursing. One is to determine the client or family's responses to human problems, level of wellness, and their need for assistance. We also provide physical care, emotional care, we will teach the client and family, we will counsel and guide, and we will provide consults to other disciplines as needed. Finally, we implement interventions aimed at the prevention of complications that assist the client to meet his or her own needs and health-related goals. Nursing care plans are the written representation of the nursing process. The nursing process is a five-step scientific process that can be identified by the acronym ADPI. ADPI is a useful way to remember the five steps of the nursing process. Step one is to assess. This would include both your health history and your physical assessment. Then you are going to make a diagnosis, a nursing diagnosis based on the data you collected during your assessment step. The third step is to plan. With the client, you, you will be identifying outcomes that the client wishes to achieve. You then will look for interventions to help make those outcomes a reality. Next step, the fourth step, is to implement. Implement your plan of care. The fifth step is to evaluate. You're going to evaluate if the outcomes are being met or not met. If they are not being met, then we are going to look for revisions that need to be done in the nursing care plan. This is another representation of the nursing process that you will see. As you apply the five phases of the nursing process, assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation, you are also working to develop the plan of care for the patient. The plan of care is a documented strategy of what needs to be done to prevent complications and or improve the health of the client. Next, we are going to look at these five steps individually. Step one is the assessment. At the center of nursing care is the client and the client's family. The nursing assessment is the foundation for the entire nursing process and, as I said, is the first step of the nursing process. The whole client story must be elicited, including data on biosocial, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, and environmental factors. Use of open-ended questions whenever possible is crucial. The nurse conducts a thorough health and medical history, listening to and observing the client. We prefer to get as much of the information directly from the patient as possible, but we also may use other sources such as the family, just by observing the client's physical state, and also using medical records. Both subjective and objective data will be gathered. Subjective data is what the client actually says. Objective data is observable data and comes from the physical nursing assessment and medical records. An example of subjective data would be this. The client states, I lose my breath when I walk across the room. In the same situation, an example of objective data collected would be the client's respiratory rate increased from 20 when he was sitting to 42 after walking to the bathroom. Step two of the nursing process is the diagnosis. In the diagnostic phase, the nurse begins clustering the information within the client's story and formulates an evaluative judgment about a client's health status. Using this process, the nurse makes an appropriate diagnosis. The process utilizes clinical reasoning, which is sometimes referred to as thinking like a nurse. The nurse gathers information, evaluates the significance of the information, and then looks to determine what is the value of implementing different actions.
How do you determine if you have the right nursing diagnosis? Compare the data you have gathered with the NANDA I list that is in your nursing diagnosis handbook. These diagnoses are internationally recognized as nursing diagnosis. Do the signs and symptoms you have collected from your client match the defining characteristics supplied by NANDA I? Would a nursing intervention help support a change? The nursing diagnosis is used as the basis of the plan of care for the client. By selecting a diagnosis from this list, the nurse labels the client's responses in a language that specifically identifies and defines the client problem for nurses. By using a diagnosis from this list, the nurse is ensuring that a health state is identified that a nurse can legally diagnose and treat, and it also helps to distinguish what nursing is accountable for. There are three types of nursing diagnoses. The first is called the problem-focused diagnosis, and this is one in which the client demonstrates an undesirable response to a health condition or process. A risk diagnosis is made when the nurse determines that the client is vulnerable to developing a problem-focused diagnosis. The third type of nursing diagnosis is the health promotion diagnosis, and it is made when the client exhibits behaviors that show a readiness to enhance certain behaviors that will increase his or her well-being. The health promotion diagnosis is the only diagnosis that is not focused on prevention of illness, but rather on enhancing health. The next three slides give you an example of how each diagnosis is written. The problem-focused diagnosis has three parts. It has the nursing diagnosis, it will have a related to statement, and it will have as evidenced by. This is a very common nursing diagnosis. A risk diagnosis is also commonly used. It involves two parts, the nursing diagnosis and risk factors. The third diagnosis, health promotion diagnosis, is also a two-part nursing diagnosis. It has the nursing diagnosis, but then it has as evidenced by. Next, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the related to statement and the as evidenced by or risk factor parts. First, the related to phrase or the etiology of the nursing diagnosis. A very carefully written individualized related to statement will enable the nurse to plan nursing interventions that is going to assist that client to accomplish the outcomes that they want and to return to an optimal state of health. In our nursing diagnosis book, there are several related, fa related to factors listed for each diagnosis. If one is there that is written that is appropriate for your client, you should use it. If none are appropriate, then you can develop a new related to statement. Remember, a related to statement is not a medical diagnosis. The as evidenced by are listed as defining characteristics in your nursing diagnosis book. These are signs and symptoms that are identified in a client assessment that support the nursing diagnosis. When connecting them to the nursing diagnosis label, the phrase as evidenced by is used to demonstrate that association between the signs and symptoms and the diagnosis. As evidenced by is used in both problem focused and health promotion nursing diagnoses.
Risk factors consist of defining characteristics or related to phrases that you see during your assessment and you feel that these may lead to a client health problem. Risk factors are found only in the risk nursing diagnoses. Step three of the nursing process is planning. You have collected all of your data and you've made a diagnosis. Now what? You need a plan. The planning phase of the nursing process is where the nurse directs the development of client outcomes with the client and the family's input and identifies nursing interventions that are going to be needed in order to accomplish those outcomes. But the first thing you need to do is decide which of the nursing diagnoses are going to be the ones you're going to implement. You can look at physical needs such as airway, breathing, and circulation. You can also look at Maslow's hierarchy or you could look at safety needs. All of these can be used to help you determine which of your nursing diagnosis need to take top priority. Once you've determined that, you are then going to work on outcomes. And again, those outcomes will either be short term or long term. And you are also going to be working on interventions. And again, the interventions we use should be based on research. I'm going to be talking about both outcomes and nursing interventions in the next two slides. An outcome can either be short term or long term, but regardless, it needs to be smart. It needs to be specific. It needs to contain very specific information about what the client will achieve. It needs to be measurable. The nurse should be able to measure the client's results. It needs to be attainable. Is it something the client can actually do? It needs to be realistic, again, based on their physical condition and it needs to be timed. When do we expect this outcome to be achieved or when do we want to reevaluate it again? Your textbook does contain standardized nursing outcomes that you can and should be using, but remember they are generic. You need to modify them to, sh to show your individual client's outcomes and the setting that they are in. Interventions are the roadmaps directing the best way to provide nursing care. Interventions may be done independently by a nurse or the nurse may collaborate with the physician or other health care professionals. Therefore, nursing interventions can, will include both direct and indirect care. Nurse initiated treatments that result from the plan of care could include assessing the patient's ability to cough and deep breathe. They could be driven by the physician and some of the treatments he initiated, such as administering pain medications, and it can be daily essential activities that the patient cannot perform independently, such as turning a patient every two hours. Nursing interventions must have a time frame associated with them. When or how often do these nursing interventions need to be done? Q day, once a day, BID, twice a day, or does it need to be done on a specific date? Interventions that are clearly written will allow everyone involved in the client's care to know how to care for that client. As I said before, the nursing interventions are a road map. The clearer the map, the easier it is to get to the destination. In this case, the destination would be to accomplish the outcomes that the client wants to accomplish. When you have nursing interventions, you also need to have rationale. This is explains why the interventions will help you to reach the outcomes that you've determined. This is especially important as a nursing student for you to understand why the intervention will work to achieve the outcomes. Your textbook contains standardized nursing interventions with rationale. Again, these should be used as a baseline and modifications need to be made to your client and to your setting. The fourth phase of the nursing process, the implementation phase, is exactly what it says it is. It is carrying out of the individualized plan of care for the client. It is the doing of the nursing process. The nurse assures that the plan is implemented by performing activities, by delegating activities, or by collaborating with others who are qualified to implement those activities. Our focus as nurses is on caring for the patient and the family 
so that they can function at their highest level. It is important to know that during this part as you are carrying out the plan, you must document carefully and report any pertinent information you discover to the appropriate members of the healthcare team. Remember, we are continually assessing to assure that the interventions are effective and are moving towards having the outcomes met. The fifth phase of the nursing process is evaluation. Notice I did not say it's the last or final phase of the nursing process. The evaluation phase is continuous throughout the nursing process. It is essential that periodic assessments at different points in time be done to assure that the plan of care accurately represents the client's current state of health. As long as the client is with you, evaluation of his or her status is occurring. What are you actually evaluating? You're evaluating the progress that has been made toward meeting the outcomes that were agreed upon by you and the client. The client outcomes are evaluated using the data collected from your nursing interventions. You are looking to see whether the client is at terms of meeting the outcome. If your outcome is not being met, first make, look back at your outcome to make sure that they are smart outcomes. If, if they are, then what you may need to do is change or modify some of your interventions. In, in any case, if an outcome is not being met, something must be changed. And this is where revision comes in. As a result of your evaluation, you, the nurse, can make revisions to the plan of care. This could be changing the time frame of when an outcome should be achieved. It could be changing the frequency of an intervention. It could be adding a new intervention. Or it could be resolving this particular nursing diagnosis and starting with a new, more pertinent one that you have now determined to be important based on the new data you have collected. In summary, the nursing process is the organizing framework for professional nursing practice. It is a critical thinking process used by nurses to give the best care possible to their clients. Our nursing diagnosis book should be used when formulating care for your client. It contains standardized nursing diagnoses, outcomes, and interventions. All have been approved by NANDA International. By using this standardized language, we are ensuring that nurses speak a common language when providing nursing care.